Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about the monitor view and specifically how to build and customize views in Wireless Workbench 6. The monitor view is a place in Wireless Workbench designed for users to set up customized views of channels and other devices to give them status of how those devices are operating, really for during the production or during a show when wireless systems are in use. I want to start by just describing the interface and then we'll set some views up. Uh, on the left hand side here, I've got what I would refer to as the monitor stage. This is the place where I'm going to be able to place widgets and other visualizations that correspond to my channels and devices. On the right hand side here, I have a device chooser which allows me to pick from those channels and devices to choose what's visualized. The first thing you'll notice is that under the channels subsection, uh, I've got 32 channels online right here. Um, I can choose each and every one of these channels. These are all of the channels that correspond to whatever is in my inventory here. And you'll notice that if I check one of these checkboxes, a channel strip corresponding to this channel is displayed. Now, the contents of this channel strip here are all reflective of what you would see on the front panel of, in this case, the Axient digital uh, receiver. I've got frequency information, meters, transmitter info, whether the thing is encrypted or not, and some other status information. I want to talk about quickly how I can customize the content in this channel strip. Uh, maybe I'm someone who doesn't really care about, I don't want to edit anything about the receiver, but I really want to see RF and audio meters and some battery status. If I click on this gear right down here, or if I right click and select monitor widget designer from the background of the monitor stage, I get this channel strip builder and it allows me to show and hide uh, elements of this channel strip that I want to see or do not want to see. So you'll notice I can turn on and off these certain properties and when I apply that, the channel strip gets updated to reflect uh, my settings, which is kind of nice. So you'll notice that, let's say, if I care about certain channels for a particular um, song in my performance or a particular um, moment in my event, I can add these channel strips up and all of these channel strips get added to this view here. Now they all kind of look the, uh, the same because I don't have any transmitters on, but I want to show you that simply by right clicking on these devices, um, I can assign a color to them uh, that might help me differentiate one channel versus another. So if I really want my money talent to stick out, I can make their channel red and have the other channels be white or blue or something like that. Now you also notice I can drag and uh, select a range of channels that I can then apply I'm feeling hot pink today. There we go. Um, a couple settings too. So I can drag and drop a couple three and then make those guys pink uh, and so on and so forth. So you can see there's some flexibility built in how you can modify channel strips like this. So showing channel strips on the monitor stage is a really helpful way to basically put all of the channels you care about looking at or care about monitoring in one place at one time. Uh, now there is another feature I want to talk about really quickly and that's views. So maybe you can imagine in a uh, music festival, uh, different bands are going to go on at different times. So, if, you know, for the first band starts at 10 in the morning, I don't know, maybe that's an early music festival, people are sleeping later than that. 1 p.m., let's say, um, that would be band one, and band two starts at 2 p.m. I could build a monitor stage for each one of those bands and basically put different channels corresponding to which band's wireless systems I care about at that time. So these views you can create by clicking this plus button, and you can also rename them by double-clicking and saying, uh, to calling them whatever you want. So I'll call that one band one, band two. You'll notice when I select a different view, all of the channel strips, uh, I haven't added anything to this view, but each one of these is independent. So I can totally add uh, whichever things I want to each stage. So there's another thing besides channel strips I want to talk about, and that's this mini timeline view. For a particular channel, and you'll notice I can add the same channel on multiple views, it's totally independent. Um, I'm might want to care about more data than just the real-time information from a channel strip. So you'll notice this channel strip shows the exact information that's being displayed on the front panel of the device. But uh, maybe I'm a user that doesn't live in front of wireless workbench and I might have a, a bunch of other things to take care of. And if uh, an oh my goodness moment happens where a loud audio artifact is heard or some big RF thing occurs and I'm not right in front of my computer, I might want to be able to go back and see what just happened. Let me see some uh, history about this channel. This is the exact use case why we created this timeline view. Now again, you know, this is a little bit boring since transmitters aren't online, but what I can see is this data is actually all of the monitoring information from this channel strip being plotted in a two minute graph that's just traveling leftward. And if I had a transmitter that had some loud audio spike, what I would see is in the audio field, that information just 
traveling leftward and I could be able to see a brief history of this particular channel's information. Now you'll notice these check boxes to show and hide these things, they're independent. So if I just wanted to see the mini timeline information, I could turn off the strip and vice versa, I could just see the channel strip if I wanted. So those timelines are really cool. A great way to see some historical data. Another thing I want to talk about is the ability to arrange channels uh, with flexibility. So right now you'll notice when I add channel strips, they all kind of go to the top left. I can change the arrangement mode uh, of any given view by using this drop down, this uh, little menu here, or again by right clicking and changing the arrangement mode to one of three settings. Auto basically automatically orders the channels from the top left rightward based on their order in this chooser here. But if I go to free, what the, this allows me to do is drag and drop these guys anywhere I want. I can overlap them if I'm feeling inclined and basically correspond channels to any um, placement that makes sense to me. Maybe these two channels are on stage right and this one's on stage left, so I want to see things that way. Uh, which is very close to, but a little bit different than the last arrangement mode, which is snap. So this is a cool mode that basically allows me to be a bit more organized, and if I want to be um, organizing things in a grid, when I drag and drop these channels, you'll notice a grid appears, and that little red uh, shadow there shows me where that channel strip's going to get dropped. It's a nice way to be a little bit more organized, uh, and make sure things align. And I'll only tell you one more thing about this view, this tutorial's getting kind of long, and that's if you want to prioritize certain channels or make it easier to see certain things, what you can do is change the size of channel strips. So by right clicking, you'll notice I get a bunch of different options and one of those things is monitoring widget size. So right now by default, everything falls into the small view. Uh, if I've got a lot of channels to see and I wanna make everything tiny, I can do that. Or if I've got old, I know I have old eyes, and or I'm gonna be looking at wireless workbench from a far way away, I can make certain channel strips large, and this way I've got a lot better visibility to all of the status information about this particular channel from across the room. And uh, a really nice convenience feature is you can select multiple channels and apply those sizes to them at one time, uh, giving you kind of ultimate flexibility to design the view of your dreams. So I hope this video tutorial was helpful. There's a lot we didn't cover, and I'll probably do another follow-on tutorial video to talk about some extra features of the monitor view. But if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see different types of monitoring tutorials or anything else about Wireless Workbench 6, be sure to let us know in the comments down below. Thanks.